Hello, this is the Python Coder and this video is the starter, how to get set up. Well, we're going to look at what you need to know and what's good to know and then we're going to show you why that's important with a little one minute video. If you're interested in extra details, there's a section you don't need to watch but some extra information if you're interested. At the end of the video, there's a couple of step-by-step -step guides on how to download and install Python. So what do you need to know? Well, you don't really need to know how to press OK, OK, OK. So a lot of videos just show you how to download and install Python by just clicking OK. You don't really need to know that. What do you need to know? Well, you need to know what operating system you've got. So, what's an operating system? Well, it's the thing that manages your computer. So, what operating systems are you likely to have? Well, most people use Windows, especially in the office, but other people use Mac, other people use Linux that has different types. So, you should be familiar with which operating system you have. So before you download anything, know which one you have. So for example, Windows, you may have the latest version, which is Windows 10 at this moment in time. You also need to know if you've got a 32-bit or a 64-bit computer. What does that mean? Well, what's a bit? Here we've got a 0 or a 1, so you've got two choices. So that's a bit. Now, if we have another bit, We've got four choices. We can have 0 and 1 and 0 and 1. Again, if we add another digit, we double the amount of choices that we've got. And you can see every time we have a digit, we double the amount of choices. So those are bits. So you keep doubling up, you can see with 32 bits, we've got a lot of uh, information. And if we've got 64 bits, we've got a huge amount. So the computer inside can deal with either 32-bit or 64-bit information at a time. So you could say 64-bits are going to be a lot better. So that's why modern computers are normally 64-bit, where perhaps if your computer's a bit old, like mine, it's 32-bit. So you can see that on your computer, it will be written this example uses Windows. We have the system type, so it's 32 bit operating system, and the other one 64 bit. If you're not sure how to find this information out or any other information, just go online and just ask the question Is my computer 32 bit or 64 bit? What is good to know? Well, you might see that there's Python 2 and Python 3. So which one should you use? Simple, Python 3. The only real reason you want to use an old version of Python is perhaps if you're doing things like machine learning and artificial intelligence. And as a beginner, you're not going to be doing that yet. So you'll quite happily use Python 3. Path, what does this mean? Well, here's a leaf on a tree. And any leaf, we can tell where it is on a tree by the path from the bottom of the tree. So we have the trunk, and then we have a branch coming off the trunk, and another branch, and then a twig. So we can see where any leaf is by that path. Now, if we move those words and split them, you can see how we use these paths to say where a folder or a file is. Yeah, so it's a bit like a path, it's like a path on a tree. So you can think of a bit like a, like a family tree even. So that's a path. When you download and install Python, you can see this option, add Python to path. Make sure that you tick that, because that means your computer can find your files easy. Okay, a couple of useful tips. Here we've got loads of print statements. The top one is Python 2, and the bottom one is Python 3. And you can see the difference is the brackets. So if you ever look online, 
normally somewhere there's a print statement and if you have a look at that print statement if it hasn't got brackets it might be python 2 and if it has got brackets it's probably python 3 so that's a good way of knowing the difference between 2 and 3 look for the brackets in the print statement so if you're going to copy and then paste code from the internet be careful sometimes it doesn't work and that's because of these characters yeah the quotes the single quote and a double quote sometimes they're not normal characters and when you copy them into a folder instead of being the normal characters they're something different and then your program doesn't work so you can just delete them and rewrite them retype them and it will work so if you're going to use code from the internet and it doesn't work have a look at these characters we're going to watch a small video that lasts about one minute in this we're going to create a python file we're going to name it and then we're going to drag it into something called a command prompt where we can run that file in the command prompt we're going to use the path to go to the folder where the file is using cd for change directory and then we're going to write the file name to run the program you're not supposed to understand all of this but the reason why we're showing you the video is to show you the importance of the path so the computer can find the file and the importance of .py so the computer understands it's a python file enjoy Why is the path important? Well here we're going to create a Python file with a few print statements that just prints a couple of words on the screen. So we're going to save the file as first program and then .py. The .py at the end tells the computer it's a Python file. So we're going to save that and then we're going to open up a command prompt and we're going to run the file in the command prompt so the first way we're just going to drag the file into the command prompt can you see the path so the path and the file name are in the command prompt we press enter and the file runs you can see the message here's a trick you right click on the top of the folder to get the path copy that then in the command prompt we do cd for change directory and then we paste the path so now we're in the folder where the file is if we just write the file name the computer will know that it's a python file because of the .py and when we press enter here's our messages again here is the extra section you don't need to watch this but if you're interested here's some extra information what is a program you may see it written as a sequence of instructions what does that mean well we've seen the python program where we had, we had the print commands so it's just a series or a few commands and we can write these commands in a line and we have special words that mean things so print means just show on the screen so these are special keywords that the computer understands when we use them in the python program and we have these kind of rules what these words mean and how we are going to instruct the computer what to do that's a program what is python well here's some explanations of what python is you may see a high level language and an interpreted language a scripting language so what does all this mean well imagine if a person said blah 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 and that seems easy to understand and if we change that to just using the word print blah 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 it's pretty much the same so the high level language tries to use language that is similar to a human it's not quite the same but you can see that it's similar so that's a high level language so it's closer to the human a low-level language is more 
closer to the computer. So we have the kind of very small words that are used in assembly language and we have the zero and ones in the machine language which the computer really understands. So they're quite low level languages. So the idea is the low level are closer to the computer so the computer can understand them easier and the high level languages are ones that are more closer to the human languages. What is meant by the interpreter? Here we see a few print statements and the interpreter reads each line, interprets that so it can run on a computer. This is different from the compiler which takes all of the code, the source code, compiles it into an object code so it changes it first and then it runs on a computer. So it's a different process. Here once it's compiled the object code can run quickly on a computer. So there is a difference between interpreter and compiler and Python is, uses the interpreter. The compiler is used by programs like uh, languages like C++ and Java. And finally scripting language, well languages like Python are sometimes called scripts and that's why it's called a scripting language. Okay so we put in Python and download and we come to the Python download page. We can look for the operating system Windows, Linux or Mac for example. We're going to look at Windows and you'll see in this example with Windows we've got many options. So we've got the latest versions at the top so we can see here this is Python 3.6 it changes we've got 3.7 now but in this example you can see the top three have x86 the bottom three have x8664 so the top three are 32 bit the bottom three are 64 bit now the options are web based installer executable installer and zip file so you can choose any just run from the web is the top one, run from a file is the second one and run from a zip file is the third one. So just click on one of these, it will give you the option and then you can just save the file and then run it. That's how to download Python. Ok so we've got our Python file, we can click on it and now we're going to run the program. So once we run it asks us do we want to install and we can customize the installation. Remember to add the Python to path at the bottom. So click that box. I like to customize mine. What means I can see what it's doing. So you can just leave things ticked and click next, but you can see what it's doing. Here add Python to environment variables is good to make sure that's ticked. And now we can click install. So now we have to set up progress. Uh, this takes uh, a long time depending on how old your computer is and I've already got Python so this is where I'm going to cut out the process on mine but I will leave a link if you want to see the process finished.